What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... Dylan! You son of a bitch! <laughs> Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another video. No smoothie today, cup of tea. I'm British, it's in the morning, I need my caffeine. Today we're going to show you how to get more inventory space, more stash space uh, in Diablo 4. Now, unfortunately there is no way of earning tabs currently, there's no way of buying tabs currently, uh, but what I'm going to show you is a little system that I've been using in Diablo 3. I've been using it in D4, used it in D2 a little bit as well to basically increase the amount of items you can store uh, by basically having multiple characters. Now, it isn't muling per se, that is something that you can do. Uh, I'm just going to show you like how my little system works. Uh, hopefully speaking, it's useful to you. Hopefully it takes a little bit of pressure off uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. Before we do though, as always guys, thumbs up, uh, brightens my day. Now, first off, we only get four stash tabs. Uh, I think that's kind of criminal in this game because there are so many items. I want to play all five classes. I want to store items of varying different levels uh, in case I want to play through another character like off season maybe. Uh, I probably want to store a bunch of powers at the moment. As time goes on it might be the case that we only play seasonal characters in which case all this like lower level shit at like level 50, level 30 I don't need and I'll chuck out. But for the moment uh, until we get to season one I probably want to hang on to this stuff. Now the exact way my stash is configured probably isn't important. Uh, and I probably should just say before we get going on that, four stash tabs, realistically, I think Blizzard may be being a little bit naughty here because maybe they want to sell us some stash tabs. Naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> um, there is no evidence of that. That is just purely my speculation. Naughty, naughty. I know Asmongold has bet somebody $500 that they'll sell stash tabs and they won't be earnable. Uh, it does look current information that you're going to earn one stash tab per season by doing some kind of seasonal objectives so it's going to take you a long time uh, to build these tabs out basically so this system it will still be useful i think even in a year or two years of the game because you might well have just a bunch of stuff uh, you want to store now uh, how long that takes to get those stash tabs we don't know tableau 3 probably was about 15 hours 20 hours of seasonal play to grab a tab you could definitely do it much, much faster if you were an experienced blaster. You could get your stash tab unlocked pretty quickly. I think for Diablo 4, it's probably going to be closer. I'm going to guess at like 50 or 60 hours worth of game time to actually get your tab. Uh, we'll have to see. We've got no idea where it is in the battle pass. Um, and I'm assuming it's going to be linked to that. But let's get on to how you get more space. Now, my tab again this doesn't matter this is just my initial draft for how my stash works it's going to change uh, at the moment tab one i've got all my gems again maybe at some point i'll decide i don't need to keep these i've got some aspects i'm going to chuck some like spare sigils and potions and stuff in this kind of like area here so maybe i don't want to you know carry all this stuff around so that'll go there kind of in that area the next tab is going to be for offense stuff so gloves, weapons, rings, amulets, anything that's capable of rolling an offensive aspect uh, or might make a good base, something like that. Um, obviously, I haven't been through and checked all of these because not all of them uh, will be damage based. Obviously, some amulets can be defense, uh, some rings can be utility, so on and so forth. Next tab is going to be the defense. So that's like your helms, it's going to be your chests, uh, it's going to be your pants, boots, that kind of stuff. I've chucked a few aspects as well so defensive aspects here uh, offensive aspects might well go here now once these tabs get full i do need to go through this and probably take some of these pieces out and mule them or get rid of them uh, or give them to a character uh, and that's kind of how the stash is set up it's going to change 100 percent i've only made one character up to 73 i've barely played any other classes on this account so you know how this is this is totally up to you the three tabs uh, basically use them how you want um, it might just make sense to store end game items only you might chuck all this stuff out that's up to you but the system and the whole thing comes in with this tab here which is the first one and this is going to be what's called our inbox it's also going to be our storage for all of our characters so the character can actually store 33 items it's a row of 11 and three columns so you can fit 33 items in your character's inventory 
33 I think takes us to here because these are actually 10 across so that's 30 down to there so 33 so this square here is the max capacity if you were to have a full inventory on your character uh, and dump them out so at the moment these are all items that either I've I've picked up and thought maybe I'll do something with them like plus two to fireball maybe I'll give that to another sork at some point and um, I'll probably just throw it away I'm not sure whether I'll ever play a level 37 fireball sorks that's probably for the bin but let's just say these were all items we wanted to keep uh, well basically that's how we're going to do the system they're going to be stored on the individual character and then when we come to do a play session we take them out of here we stick them here now why is this elixir randomly floating well this is the bookmark so that would be the end I put that there and then I would know that all of these items came from this character's inventory so as I go around sanctuary you know beating stuff up and I find let's say items I can then chuck them just in here and I know that everything after this elixir is something that I found in this play session that I'm thinking maybe I want to hang on to so ultimately at the end of the session I'll then have a little look through this stuff uh, and decide whether I want to keep it or not now it may well be that I can't decide so it may well be that I should move the elixir to here and I expand everything um, but obviously just bear in mind actually that this is the last square can't go any any further than this or it's not going to fit in your character's inventory so let's just log on to a second character uh, and let's just pretend that this is something we're going to do and i'll show you how it works so we'll jump onto the necro we've i've only made a level eight necro it's just like i guess for this video example so let's say that everything in my necro is inventory stuff that i want to keep long term either for this character maybe for another necromancer or whatever then all we're going to do is log on, dump the stuff, put the elixir in place so that we know where everything is. So here we go, bang, bang, bang. Let's just say we wanted to keep all this crap. I then put the elixir here and I know uh, that I can go to this square here. If you can't remember which one it is, uh, you could just simply uh, put another elixir. So let's just split this one. So you could always have a fixed one there have two elixirs like a bookmark so you can't go past this point put this one here that way you know that everything after there um, will still fit in the character's inventory so if you can't be asked looking through everything at the end of the session so long as you're not going past this one here you can just have it in the inventory put it back go play a different character um, now obviously the other strategy is just simply to mule things and again you can do that as well so you can just simply create a new character whatever class you want doesn't matter and you can just call it mule one you can call it um you know it might be you want to store all your amulets there you might want to call it amulets if i could type you might want to call it rings you might want to call it offense defense you might want to just have it for a class specific mule um i don't know one of the things that worries me a little bit about that is is we've only got the 10 character slots so i've played through this sork up to 73 on cold I want to play a lightning sork, I want to play a fire sork, I want to play a blizzard sork. So that's like four of my slots gone. I made one necro, that's five. So I'm not big on just creating mules. Um, you know, one way you could do it is one for each class, a playable character, and then a mule for each class. We don't know whether we're going to have seasonal rebirthing like we do on Diablo 3, where you can reset a character and start again. Uh, because again, otherwise, I think 10 character slots is a bit stingy. Uh, and again, probably puts a bit of pressure on the stash um, yeah so that's basically that's basically how we do the system I hope this will alleviate some of the pressure off you I'm a collector type player I like getting every item uh, I like keeping lots of stuff just in case I want to play through the game at some point you know maybe off season with stuff um, but yeah you'd put this stuff back like this do 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 we'd log off on the necro and then we've got all this space um, to fill in with our character's inventory and then we've got a little bit of leeway and a bit of headroom each session um, and obviously the further you get onto a character the less and less things will probably be interesting uh, and as I say I probably should chuck half of this stuff out but how you do the other three tabs that's like up to you uh, and your decision. I hope this video has been helpful I've been Filthy Casual take it easy guys peace <laughs>